I, I know. <laughs> I know. But could you imagine this last year without technology? Oh my God! Yeah, no, nobody, nobody yeah. imagined this. It's it crazy. Be, I, you know, I teach biotechnology, and I feel as if biotechnology has come to the rescue of the country uh, because of the vaccine. <clears throat> it's a medical miracle that they were able to develop a vaccine that quickly. Mm -hmm. That technology for RNA producing vaccines, it's been around for a while. This is the first time I've ever seen it tried. Uh, so it's, and it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's I got my cool. first vaccine dose already, waiting for my <laughs> second one. <laughs> I got my second about three weeks ago. So I, I what a relief. Yeah. If, you know, when, you're, when you hit my age, you really worry about COVID yeah. because almost all the people that have died have been older people. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, uh, pretty scary. And my daughter's an ER doc and she's an emergency room doctor and so is my, my son-in-law. So this last year they have seen a lot of death. Uh, so I feel like I was, a, I was under house arrest for uh, a year because they didn't want me to go anywhere. And, uh, Luckily, we can teach online, so it's uh, it's been okay. I know, yeah. I mean, technology has its 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 upsides and its downsides. <laughs> this is a minor downside compared. Yeah, to this is a minor, but it's nice. I mean, we could be at the other side of the world right now, <laughs> still connecting. I think that's. You know, I have I have students from I have one student from New Zealand and another one oh. from uh, I think it's Romania. You know, they're foreign students that are, they come into the class and uh, wow. you know, they're a little tired because they're yeah. time the zones. Time different. Different. Yeah. But, I mean, it's an amazing thing. It anyway, is. what can I do for you? What do you? <clears throat> so my first question is, if you could please describe your childhood to me, your family, where you grew up before you came to St. Peter's. Oh, okay. Uh, well. Actually, I was born down the road from St. Peter's. I was born in the Margaret Hague, Margaret Hague Hospital, which now is the Beacon Condominiums. Mm -hmm. It used to be the largest, uh, I think at one time it was the largest medical center in America. It's huge. Well, you can see how big the, the Beacon Condominiums are. Yeah. That was all hospital. That was a hospital complex that was built by uh, Mayor Hague. Mm -hmm. Frank Haig, uh, and he named it after, I think, his mother, uh, Margaret Haig. So that's where I was born, in Jersey City. I'm a Hudson County guy. I, I was raised in West New York and Guttenberg. Uh, I that's went where to, I live right now. <laughs> live in Guttenberg? In West New York. West New York. I, okay. Yeah, we lived on 64th Street, and then we moved to 68th Street in Guttenberg. Oh. Uh, I uh, I went to St. Joe's of the Palisades Grammar School. Which oh my is, God, that's so nice. <laughs> and I we moved to to uh, Guttenberg. I went to Ann L. Klein High School Grammar School. And at the time, Ann L. Klein, if you graduated from there, you went to Memorial High School. So I went to Memorial mm -hmm. High School. Did you go to Memorial too? No, we used to live in Union City. Um, but we recently moved to to West New York. So my brother, I have a younger brother. He goes to Memorial. Is a Memorial, yeah. Yeah, and yes. I actually go to St. Joseph's of the Palisades Church. That's our church. We part. That, that, that was my church. I used to go there all the time. My, I told oh. you my dad was a very religious guy. Very every, religious. Su every Sunday, him and my mom yeah. would walk <laughs> arm in arm to uh, Palisades up to St. Joe's. Uh, and come back. Very beautiful church. Yep. He was a he was an immigrant. My dad was an immigrant from uh, from a place actually a uh, little north of Rome, north and on the eastern coast mm -hmm. by the uh, by the Adriatic Sea. He was a it's a little town. I think it had a population of about three hundred people, and. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> He came in the in the 1920s. He was 16 years old. Yeah. Came all by himself. Uh, what happened was uh, the uh, wait, what is this? 
what happened was the uh, the fascists, you know, Mussolini, they were taking over yeah. Italy. They marched into his little town and they were beating everybody up. And oh my God. Didn't go along. And my dad, my dad would be left to Bernie Sanders. I mean, he was a very liberal guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to have any part of that. So uh, he had a third, uh, went to the fourth grade, but he was a carpenter. He was trained as a carpenter. So at 16, he got the courage to get on a boat, came over to America all by himself. Wow. Worked, got enough money to get his brothers over. Worked, got the got his dad over, his mom, his aunts, got the whole family over to America. Yeah, it was a. He came from a part of Italy. The motto of the of the area is uh, strength and kindness. Strength wow. and kindness, and that was my dad. He was strong really guy, very kind, good heart, mm -hmm. good hearted guy. Uh, my mom. My mom was uh, born in America. Her father was an Italian immigrant. He came mm -hmm. over in an earlier wave. Uh, and he was, uh, he was, my dad was pretty poor, <laughs> you know, like most immigrants. Yeah. My granddad, he, uh, he was a real capitalist. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. he, uh, he was a landlord, had a lot of apartment houses, but he lost all his money uh, during the depression. So if he didn't lose all his money, my mother would never have met my father and I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and we had a big Italian family. I mean, uh, my, my cousins all lived, we lived on 68th street. My, my, uh, my cousin Raymond lived on 66th street with my uncle Mario and my cousin Gordon lived on 64th Street, right by the church. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> they would all get together. They'd get together during uh, holidays at my grandmother's house, apartment. They'd sit at the table, you know, and the women would cook all day. And mm -hmm. the guys would talk about politics at the table. <laughs> uh, in fact, they would talk at politics at the table. And I remember as a young kid listening to that. And it was the same conversations you have today. You know, it was uh, conservative yeah. versus liberal, uh, people that uh, were to the right of center versus left of center, uh, people that were capitalists versus socialists. Mm -hmm. same, same, same arguments that you yeah. see today. Uh, but at the end, they liked each other. That's the difference. They didn't <laughs> just talk to each other and, and fight. You know, they liked each other, but yeah. they disagreed. A lot, uh, but it was a good education. So uh, I'll tell you one story that illustrates my dad and, and my life early on. I turned 15 years of age. Okay, so my dad says, uh, "I got a I got a birthday present for you." I said, "What is it?" He says, "We're going down to Jersey City. I'm getting you your working papers." I oh. said, you're getting me my working paper. That's my birthday present. He said, no, I got, I got you a job in the factory for the summer. You're going to work in a factory. And it was a factory on, on uh, well, you know West New York, right? You know where the Mayfair Theater is? Yes. Behind the Mayfair Theater now, there's a big empty lot. Yeah. That was a huge factory. Must have had hundreds and hundreds of people. And wow. I got I got a job in that factory. Uh, and every summer while I was in high school, I would go there and work. And that high, that factory was full of guys that uh, had gone to World War II. You know, they had fought in World War II, and mm -hmm. they were factory workers. They made a really decent living, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot about life. Wow. Just listening to them. Yeah, their oh, stories. And that was that was as much of my education as anything I ever learned in college or graduate school or medical school. Uh, those guys were interesting men. That's all I can tell you. A lot of good hearted guys, a lot of tough guys. Yeah. But, but people you can learn from, you know? Yeah. I think I've tried to do that my whole life is learn from 
everybody mm. as much as I could. Yeah. So that was important. But I, I realized one thing, and I, this is what my dad wanted me to learn. If you go work in a factory, you don't want to work in a factory your whole life. It's, <laughs> it's hard work. Yeah. It's tough. <clears throat> so I think he wanted me to make sure I go to school. So I actually studied harder after I worked in the factory. So I, I said, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. This is, <laughs> this is too tough, you know? So, well, I went to Memorial and uh, there was one teacher there at Memorial, I'll, I'll always remember her name was Mrs. Silverstein. She taught math. She was a terrific teacher. And I, I, I sometimes think she saved me because she realized I could do math very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, she encouraged me to go to college. And, uh, and my dad encouraged me to go to college. So I did. And I went to college. And uh, I, did, I never really knew what I wanted to major in. But I took a course. I went to Rutgers. I took a course, uh, a fellow by the name of, uh, I think his name was Sonnenbach. He was a really bright guy. I was taking a course in uh, <clears throat> radiation biology. It was like a senior course. Yeah, yeah. About how genetics was really a very interesting field. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about, you know, how things like x-rays could cause mutations. And he said, you know, he said, I think that the field of genetics is, is an up and coming field. Mm -hmm. So I, I read some more about that and that's what I decided to do. I got a lucky break in that I could go to a program in, in uh, Philadelphia that had just started uh, in human genetics. It was a consortium. Uh, consortium meant that many different universities, if you got accepted to this program, you could go to school at any of a whole bunch of universities at wow. Philadelphia. So I, I went to a lot of different universities. I did my major work with a, with a fellow who was pretty well known. Uh, his father was in the National Academy of Science. And, and uh, you know, I, I did courses at Temple and at, uh, with now Drexel and uh, University of Pennsylvania. Uh, and I got my doctorate with them. But they were well known. Uh, I was going to continue going to school, you know, and, and I, I finished my PhD. I was going to do my, my MD. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a girlfriend, naturally. <laughs> Her, naturally. She had a girlfriend, and uh, they were starting a, a new program back at Rutgers in, in uh, genetic counseling. <clears throat> So I gave my, my resume to my girlfriend's girlfriend. I don't know who she gave it to, but I got a call asking me to, to go for an interview. I went for an interview and they gave me a job as an oh. assistant professor without, without a postdoc, which was pretty nice, you know? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about, well, do I go get a job? I go back to New Jersey, get married, or do I... Uh, finish out. And I, I was still quite away from finishing the, the MD. Uh, so one thing led to another. Before you know it, I said, I'll go, I'll go take the job. So I took the job. Mm -hmm. I stayed at Rutgers uh, University for a couple of years. Uh, then we got a very big grant from the March of Dimes. Uh, and we asked the head of the Department of, of Pediatrics at Rutgers Medical School, mm -hmm. if he wanted to go in on it with us. And he said, not only should I, when we go in on it, he offered me and my buddy a job at Rutgers at the medical school. Yeah. We worked at both places for a while, and then we left the university and went to Rutgers University Medical School. And, uh, I stayed there between the two of them. I worked about 30 years there at wow. uh, Rutgers University and at Rutgers Medical School, which at the time was part of UMDNJ. 
University of Minnesota Medicine mm -hmm. and Medicine. Uh, and we started a whole genetics unit. We hired a fellow by the name of Ming Lee, who was an MD, PhD, right out of Hopkins, Johns Hopkins. Mm -hmm. He was great. And I got to work with him for about 25 years, which was wow. like a gift from God because he was so smart. Uh, <clears throat> we started a whole medical genetics unit in Central Jersey. Uh, collaborated a lot with the unit that was up in, uh, in uh, New Jersey Med Medical School, run by Dr. Desposito. Uh, and I, I had a great life. I mean, I really did. I, I lived the American dream. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I have four children. Uh, I had a great job. I <laughs> did research. I, yeah. I was running clinical laboratories. I, I could teach medical students and researchers and postdocs. I got to travel all over. <laughs> it was fa it was spectacular. Yeah. Uh, but after 30 years, I had had enough. I was tired, <laughs> beat up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of my one of my PhD students, Kathy Weiger, Kathy Weiger did her PhD with me. She left oh. and she became a teacher at St. Peter's. Yeah, yeah. So she hears that I'm going to retire. I was ready to retire. I had, I had enough money to retire. I was ready to retire. Uh, so, so Kathy comes down and she knew I liked Chinese food. She calls me up and says, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take you to a Chinese restaurant, you know, that I liked. Mm -hmm. I'm there and she pulls out a piece of paper. And uh, a fellow by the name of John Connolly, John Connolly was an MD who had gone to St. Peter's College. And I think this is the story. I'm not positive. I mean, uh, I think Father Shu got him into, into medical school or helped. Oh. But he had a great affinity for Father Shu, who was a professor of biology at St. Peter's. So he was going to give the college like, you know, a million, a million and a half dollars to endow a chair, a chair, like an endowed professor. Yeah. Uh, the purpose of which was to help the St. Peter's students get into professional schools and graduate schools. Mm -hmm. So Kathy comes down and she pulls out this piece of paper of an article. I don't know if it was in the powwow or what that. Uh, John Connolly's donating like a huge amount of money to endow a chair for this purposes. <clears throat> and she says, Lenny, you're, you're perfect for this job. Why don't you apply? <laughs> so I give her my CV and make a long story short, I was lucky enough to get this job. And uh, that was a while ago. And wow. I've, I've been here ever since and I've been happy as all hell. This is uh, another lucky break. You, know, if you want to know <laughs> what life is being in the right place at the right time? And a lot of lucky breaks, you know. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, uh, always be good to your graduate students, too. Uh, that's another <laughs> thing you should remember, right? Yeah. Uh, Kathy uh, came by. I gave her the, my CV, and uh, I've been here ever since. Uh, how long? How long have you been here in St. Peter's? Years. Twenty years. I never thought I'd be here twenty years. I thought, <laughs> was... but I have to tell you, I love it. I love St. Peter's. I love it. That's great. And I also got to. Uh, I have to tell you, I didn't know anything about Jesuit education before I came here. You know, I did know about St. Peter's though. I knew a lot about St. Peter's in a way because my mom, my mom was a, a secretary at what was Jersey City Teachers College. It's now New Jersey, uh, what is it, New Jersey City College? It's, it's little, uh, NJCU, I believe. New yeah, Jersey it's a little past St. Peter's. Yeah. I just my bicycle past St. Peter's. You know? <laughs> and going to school in, in Memorial right across the St. Joseph's High School. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, all the really smart kids I knew who had gone to Catholic high school, 
the smartest ones went went to St. Peter's. Uh, and I would drive my bicycle. I would see them all walking around. And uh, it had a reputation of having all the valedictorians of like St. Michael's and St. Joseph's. Kids didn't go to a way to school then. They yeah. stayed nearby. And, and okay. Actually, when I told my, my lawyer that I was going to go to St. Peter's, my lawyer had gone to Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouutt University, uh -huh. but he had gone to Rutgers Law School, and he said, oh, uh -huh. St. Peter, he says, the two smartest guys that I ever met in law school <laughs> went to St. Peter's College, and, I, and, at, and at Robert Wood at the medical school, a lot of the docs were from St. Peter's, you know, so I had a, I had this great idea of, like, all the things I was going to do with these, these students, you know, and, uh, uh, we have this shoe, shoe uh, scholarship that mm -hmm. Dr. Connolly set up, and <clears throat> we've, we've, it gives the students money to do internships and uh, to learn and do research work at other places. So we've sent students all over, uh, all over. I mean, uh, wow. uh, and a lot of them have gotten into really, really great schools, you know, like. Uh, NYU, and, uh, Stanford, and Pittsburgh, you know, as well as Robert Wood and, and New Jersey Med. That's where most of them go. But a lot of them go for PhDs. We've had kids at uh, MIT and at Princeton. And, uh, wow. it's, it's been, I guess that's why I'm still here. I really like doing this. I mean, it's yeah. enjoyable, very enjoyable. Uh, way to spend one's life it really is so i've been a very lucky man that's all i can tell you very, very <laughs> well i think i think it's luck and, and hard work as well because you put the uh, yes. well. I, I like to surround myself <laughs> with people that are a little bit smarter than me too you know it's <laughs> No, uh, yeah, you're really smart as well, because I, I tried going into like STEM and like math, medical, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I had a, I'm very, I was always very good at math. I was, uh, I was always right. able to understand math. And <clears throat> as I got older, I got a greater appreciation for science mm -hmm. uh, and technology and uh, the things that we can do now like me talking to you yeah it's, i mean uh, 150 200 years ago we didn't even have electricity i, I know crazy i mean people were just squatting around in trees i mean <laughs> now, now you have all of this because of science and technology mm -hmm. biotechnology gives you vaccines that stop covid you know yeah it's, it's a wonderful time to live it should be a time of of abundance. Yeah. Everyone, not just for a few, but for everyone. Uh, yeah. So we'll see if that can happen. It'd be nice yeah. if that happened. Yeah. But, Sadly, sometimes as humanity can be very selfish, but. Well, actually, when I came to St. Peter, I was really lucky that uh, when when uh, <clears throat> when you come from St. Peter to St. Peter's. Uh, as a new faculty, they give you a mentor, all right? Uh -huh. So because I'm so old coming in, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not just a regular uh, assistant professor. I'm coming in as a, an endowed professor. They give me the president of the university for my mentor, Father Lothran. <laughs> and you don't know Father Lothran because he passed away. And, and, uh, but Father Lothran was a Jesuit who was without a doubt one of the most amazing people I ever met in my life. He was president of, of St. Peter's. He had been president of uh, Loyola uh, in Los Angeles and uh, came to St. Peter's. He was a Brooklyn guy, a, a real wow. down-to-earth guy. had gone, done a bachelor's and master's and PhD at Fordham uh, and had a gift for, for organization really terrific you know so he's my mentor and I we got to go to dinner like once once or twice a semester and I got to talk to him and I found out about Jesuits I mean I didn't know Jesuits 
from yeah. anybody, you know? And I was so impressed with this guy. I mean, I, I really uh, was amazed at how down to earth and intelligent, but an organizer and a leader that this man was. And I, I, I kept, every time I'd go to dinner with him, I'd say to myself, you know, this guy could run IBM or uh, <laughs> I, really he could be a, a gazillionaire. He has those talents. So one day at, at dinner, I said, Father, why'd you become a priest? You know, <laughs> I don't get it. You know, and he says to me, he says, you asked the wrong question, naturally, because he's a Jesuit. And that's what they do. Uh -huh. Yeah. I said, well, what's the right question? He says, he says, when I was a young man, I, I had a calling. And the question was, could I not be a priest? He had to be a priest. He said he felt in his bones, in his marrow, that he had to be a priest. <clears throat> wow. And uh, he taught me a lot about the mission of St. Peter's, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I said to him once, I said, you know, Father, why don't you, why don't you buy a farm in Somerset County or Bergen County, all right? <laughs> Move St. Peter's there. I said, you'd have, you'd have Boston College, you know? Or... <laughs> and he looks at me and says, you asked the wrong question again. He says, we have Boston College. We have Viola. He says, Jersey City is here to educate the sons and daughters of immigrants. All right, the people who want to get a chance in life. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. He said, so is Jersey City not a perfect place? I said, <laughs> yeah, it really is, isn't it? It's yeah. perfect. It's a perfect place. The diversity is amazing. It has so many different kinds of, that's another thing I like about St. Peter's. I mean, I, I come to work and I see every kind of ethnic background and racial group and mm -hmm. religious group. Religious and it's, group. Yeah. It's, it's vibrant. It's it amazing. really is. Yeah. It's wonderful. I, I love it. I love and it. it's so nice that we all respect each other. We really do. We respect each other. I think it's, I, I think it's the way America should be. I really do. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's unlike any other school. I mean, I've gone to every kind of school. I've gone to state schools, every kind of school. Ivy League schools, all that. It is really the way America should be. I, I believe that. I, uh, yeah. I feel I feel privileged teaching. Yeah. That's yeah, <laughs> why I don't leave. I feel privileged I think, going there. I mean, it's yeah. great. Isn't it terrific? I mean, it's wonderful. It, it really is. I uh, I enjoy it. I get up in the morning. I uh, I like to go to work. You know. Uh, That's nice, yeah. That's what I want to tell you. I, mean, I, I saw some of these questions you asked. Uh, yeah, it was, well, you already kind of touched on what Did impact. I answer them all? Or? You, you said the impact that oh. the Jewish education has had on your life. Um, the next question would be what larger societal issues have occurred during your time at St. Peter's? Oh. What impact they had on the St. Peter's community? Was that number four? Yep. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that has happened since I've been here that I noticed, and mm -hmm. it's, it's this uh, inequality that you see in America. The rich are getting richer and richer and richer. Mm -hmm. uh, being poor is bad enough, but being poor now is really tough. <clears throat> I like the fact that St. Peter's spends a lot of time on social justice, try mm -hmm. to level the playing field a little bit, uh, try to give people that don't have three car garages and yeah. Mercedes and all that, give them good scholarships so that they can come to college. Yeah. Uh, if, if America doesn't do something about this gross inequality, it's gonna, it's, we're gonna have a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, and social justice, of course, you know, uh, I wouldn't you think after all this time that we wouldn't be even having the problems that they're the same problems as when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. Uh, voter suppression and all of that. That's that's horrible. That's got to stop, you know? So yeah. those are the things that strike me that have happened. The fact that 
you know, when I when I was younger, politicians, they would disagree, but it wasn't like, you know, I hate you or I, I try yeah. to destroy your life and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. They were they would disagree, but eventually they would come together and do something for the country. Yeah. Yeah, for the I also think that we have to do something with the environment. Uh, mm. We're wrecking the we're wrecking the world. We really are. Slowly. It has to stop. And it has to be a major effort on the part of all the governments of all the world, especially the developed world, mm -hmm. to uh, do technological things that are possible mm -hmm. that'll stop the pollution and the degradation of the planet. These are really important issues. Up to you, your generation. Yeah. My generation wasn't too good at that. Your <laughs> generation is important. They have to do this. It's a, it's a, it's a major, major issue. So I would say, you know, inequality, social justice, and and the environment, the yeah. three main things. I, in my time here at St. Peter's, have become pressing, pressing issues. Uh, gotta, gotta fix this. Gotta fix yeah. this. Is, yeah. yeah, we need a we need a lot of fixing. Fix well, you up. need people that have are not in it for themselves as much as yeah. really trying to. You know, it it really is what St. Peter's is about. You know, St. Peter's mm -hmm. they have that jurist personalist Father Lockwood told me. That. Yeah, it's the fact that we should be people that are lifelong learners but also care about other people. Mm -hmm. And as, as teachers, you care about you know, someone's, uh, not only their mental, but their physical and spiritual growth. Uh, yeah. That's an important part of, of St. Peter's. And, and Father Lockman said that you should try and find God's hand in all things. Well, if you find God's hand in all things, you shouldn't wreck nature. I mean, don't do <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, no. Uh, so I think Peter's Peter's tries to do all of that. It really does. And it tries yeah. to if you want to know what a Jesuit education is, that's how I look at it. I mean, it looks at uh, educating the entire person, educating everything about that person. But don't forget spiritual as well as physical and mental. Yeah. Know? I agree, I agree. Social justice, you know, think about others. Yeah. Uh, true Christianity. You know, <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's Christianity at the level of uh, yeah. uh, teaching. I guess that's what St. Ignatius wanted, you know. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot about Jesuits since I came here. I, <laughs> uh, you know, we have a Jesuit Pope now. The Pope oh, is a Jesuit, you know. Oh, you know that? Awesome. I think he was a trained oh, chemist too. I'm not sure about that, but wow. uh, I, that's a good sign. <laughs> My <laughs> mind, that's a good thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I agree. I think it's really nice as well that even though our school is a Jesuit school, you know, it's very accepting of different religious backgrounds. You know. Well, that's another thing. We're open to all yeah all kinds of people come here and and. Uh, you know what we're open to? I think I, uh, I really believe that uh, if you look at all the curriculum of all the all the different classes, they emphasize people that try to get to the heart of matter, mm -hmm. think things true, get to what's yeah. true, what's true and what's not true. That's mm -hmm. important. Uh, if you want to know what I think has happened, like socially, people forget that truth is important. You have to, you can't have alternate facts, you know, it's true. Uh, yeah. Those, that's important stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, I agree. Anything else? Is that it or? Yeah, that's pretty much it. The last question is just why is St. Peter's University an important institution of higher well, learning? <clears throat> you know that jurist personnel is, is important. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you something too, is that that, that comes through in all the Jesuit schools. Uh, I remember when my daughter, she was uh, applying to medical school. Mm -hmm. And, um, at, you know, you apply and then they have inter interviews. 
So she's interviewing at all these different colleges, you know, like uh, UMDNJ, Robert Wood, Duke, you know. So she she goes down to Georgetown because Georgetown has a medical school, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a Jesuit medical school, you know. Oh. So I, one day I asked her, I said, of all the schools you interviewed at, which one did you like the best? And she said, I liked it being interviewed at Georgetown the best. I said, really? I said, why? She said, every other school you go to, they try to impress you with how, how much money they have and how much yeah. research they do and how, mm-hmm. how their doctors get internships. That I, so I go down to Georgetown, and the only thing they're talking about is patient care. Talk yeah. about how that's the most important, taking care Hoping of, others. of the patient, you know, and think about it. Is that yeah. not the most important thing you're going to do as yeah. a doctor? You know, and so I really like that. She says, it sounded like they all had, they were all smart, but they all had good hearts. And that, wow. that impressed her a lot. You know? So I don't know. I raised her good. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you really did. Because those are, those are her values, her core values, helping others. Yeah, that's a good, good values. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're great values. You know, using her knowledge, the knowledge that she's learning to help others. I hope so. I tell yeah. you, being a dad's hell of a lot harder than doing anything else. It's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to be a dad. There's no book, you know, you can go yeah. to. <laughs> that's the, uh, you got any more questions or what? No, that is pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for everything. Trying to make what is the score anyway? What are we? This is an oral history of what? Yes, this is a oral history interview. Um, the school is just trying to make a record of how much St. Peter's has changed throughout the years. So that's why we're interviewing different professors, alumni, uh, faculty. I go um, to an old guy's been here. Right <laughs> No, no, an experienced person, a yeah, very yeah, experienced yeah. Young heart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Heart, very experienced. I'll talk to you then. Anything else or is that it? No, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for everything. It was All great. Right. Maybe, with maybe you. Uh, when we can actually sit down, you can come to my office and we can talk some more. Okay. Oh, sure. All perfect. Right. I'd love that. All righty. Have a good well, one. Then. Take care. God bless. You too. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye.